Hello. Today I'd like to do a demonstration on making an orange beaded shirt for Truth and Reconciliation Day. Uh, so you can show your support by wearing this. I previously did a similar shirt for Pink Shirt Day for anti-bullying. And uh, I will be using some of my video from that demonstration here. Um, so I figured there was no point in duplicating some of the beading techniques that you will be learning. Uh, we will also learn about some Métis beading techniques as well. Just real quickly, I want to mention if you're looking for something a little bit simpler, uh, this is more for intermediate and high school and adults doing beadwork. But this one is made with wire and it's actually quite easy to do and this would allow you a project for younger children if they wanted to do something for Truth and Reconciliation Day. I guess the first thing to start off with is some of the supplies that you will need. So to start off you will need to draw yourself a template of a t-shirt then you will cut it out and you'll use that to trace onto your material. Now there's many ways to go. You can get some orange. Uh, it's like a thicker felt that you get. Or if you just want to use black. And the other option is something called Flexi Firm. It's even firmer than the thick orange felt if you want to have a slightly firmer background, but whatever you have access to. This one was cut out with Flexi Firm. This one I actually did using the orange felt. And next thing you will need is beads. You can choose your whatever color you want for the outline. I used black and you know, you'll have your package of beads. I chose to use size 6.0 Oh, I don't know if it's 6.0, but 6 slash O beads. They're glass beads. Um, they're bigger, so that allows me to use a uh, bigger needle with a bigger hole, making it easier to thread, which I like. Um, but you can use the size 8, or you can you know, go down to size 10 or 11. And make uh, It would just be more beading for you to do as well. But uh, this is a good size, I find, for, for everyone to make it a little easier to thread. And, um, you know, optional, you can buy, buy some little feather charms to hang on at the end. Thread. Now, thread is interesting. Um, I've used quite a few different threads. Um... So you'll also need needles and I like using the sharps because if you're using something like the Flexi Firm, you do need like a stronger needle and the sharps had bigger holes, but I was having trouble with some of the beads having different, even though they're supposed to all be the same, some of them actually would not fit over the sharps because they do have a bigger head on them. So I eventually went back to using beading needles, which are fine because I was using the felt and I didn't have any trouble using it, but it's very hard to thread. Very, very small. So luckily I have some magnifiers, but when I did the pink shirt, these beads I bought were all very uniform and I had no trouble at all using the sharps. So there's the beads, I mean the needles. And then optional, you can have, you know, get yourself some sort of threader. I will demonstrate this later on. And optional is if you want to put a backing on here, um, or like the pink one, I did a backing and put a bar pin on the back. I'm probably just going to be using this style of pin for this one, which will require some strong glue. 
and I will just this glue is very great it works well so I will just you know glue one of these on the back and probably just use this because my goal on this one was to make it a little bit easier than the pink shirt demo Okay, so once you've traced out your pattern and cut it out or use the Cricut machine or however you're going to get your little pattern, we will begin by doing the outline first. We will get some black beads and we will bead all the way around the edge and then we will fill the inside in with orange beads. Now for those of you that have watched my pink shirt demo video, this is a completely different way of how to start the shirt. On my pink shirt one, we actually did not cut out the shape first. We traced it onto a square. And then we used the traced t-shirt and we began beating all the pink inside the lines of the tracing that we did. And then at the end, we trimmed out the shape of the t-shirt and we added our outline on. And then we did a backing and pin. So there's so many different ways that you can begin this. On this one, I was trying to simplify it a little bit. So just, you know, just giving you an idea just to jump ahead a little bit is I beaded the outline here and then I've begun filling in the orange. And as I said, this is a, another way of doing it. And I will just quickly show you the beading technique, but then we will jump ahead to my pink shirt demo uh, where I actually show you the the beading technique in better detail but basically what we're doing is the beading technique is grabbing four beads dropping the beads down sorry it's kind of dark here okay then I'm positioning the beads where I want them with my thumb at the top of the four, I'm going down. All right, and then I'll be tacking each bead down. And like I said, I'll go over this again uh, using my pink shirt demo uh, in just a moment. But basically you're going back down each bead and I will slow this down for you In a moment you're gonna be doing that and then you come up at the bottom of the four go through to make a double spine so that you're back at the top of the four beads in the ready position and then you're gonna load four more beads and you're gonna keep going and you're gonna fill in here I also want to point out that you don't have to do your outline first you can do what I did with the pink shirt and just do all the inside orange first and then at the end you can do your beads along the edge and actually having done it many different ways now I actually think I prefer filling in the orange first and then doing the outline after because then you can fit it exactly to the beads that you've had in here just depends on your your preference really um, but it can be done both ways. So there's no right and wrong way of doing this. Um, I will now switch over to the demonstration I did for doing this pink shirt. Um, but it's the same thing, even though I'm using pink beads, you would be using orange beads. To begin, you will get your needle 
and your thread and I've been using about an arm and a half to two arm lengths because then it just means I don't have to bead this or thread this needle as many times if you have a good eye you can just thread it but if you don't and you have one of these type of devices for threading you just put that there's different types this one has a little like hook on the end of it you shove it through and then you just take some thread loop it on that little hook pull it through normally it works better than that but it's hard to do while I'm got the camera here and I'm trying to adjust things but it's much easier when you're not trying to film at the same time I've got this glass beside me juggling the camera but usually when I use it it's a lot easier than that okay so there you have that and you put your knot at the end of the thread there's many different ways to do a knot the way my mom taught me was to wrap it around my finger a few times and then I kind of just roll it down like that pull with my nail like that and it forms a little knot and we're going to be putting a backing on this material so it really doesn't matter that there's a big knot on the back because it'll be covered but the important thing is, is we don't want it to come through the project so I would start your pin about a bead length in from the edge and write it you know just slightly above the line so you thread it through and then you will start with your beads and actually it helps to put the beads like in a little lid or jar or something and then you can just scoop like this and the technique that was demonstrated to me I found on Métis Alive YouTube channel they had a beginner beading uh, video there and you know there's many ways you can do this you can do one bead at a time you could do you know a whole row of beads or uh, I discovered that doing four at a time worked really well because it's easier to count backwards uh, three times when you're tacking down each bead individually one at a time so I strung on four beads I think she called it loading your beads okay like that and then you pull it as tight as you can underneath and then you're gonna tack down each bead so it's gonna be three three so you're gonna go like do it three times so you've got in between this bead in between this bead and in between that bead so I've got the thread coming out the bottom right now so I will come up beside the bead and then I will go down the opposite like the other side of the bead that I came up like that and it will tack down the first set of two and then I'm gonna come up again beside the next bead and sorry up and then down it's always up and then down so I've done that twice now In the beginning when your thread is really long it's a little bit more difficult but then once it gets shorter it's 
a little bit easier, okay? And I've got one more to go the third time. I tried doing this with a bigger row, but then I would get lost on where I was with tacking down. So I load four, then tack down three times. I'm at the bottom. So I'm going to come up at the bottom, very bottom bead. And the way they described it on the Métis Alive website is you make a double spine by coming through the four that you just did, pulling this through, and now you're in the ready position. So it's coming through the middle and you're in the ready position to load your next four beads. And so you will just keep loading another four beads and you will repeat the same thing. And you will do this until you formed a line straight, just straight up to the top here. And then you will continue at, and do another line right beside it and it'll, you'll find it's a little bit easier once you've got the first line in. You'll start another line, you'll start right about there and you'll go up and you'll stop when you get to this line and you'll and same thing you just keep going filling the shirt in all along here stopping like this line should have more beads and when you get to this point you're going to have you know a couple less beads. Uh, the beads do vary in size in some of them so it might not be exactly the same each time like this row here might not be the same as this row here I will come back on when I've got this part filled out and just quickly go over the sleeve I should also share what you do when your string runs out and you have to start over um, when you get to the end of your thread, I mean, I, this is just a demo, so I still have a long piece of thread, but let's say I wanted to end now my project and I still, it doesn't matter how much string I have, let's say I just wanted to end. Um, you would make sure you're ending up on the bottom of the project, which in this example, this is the bottom. And then you can just um, go like this, okay? And you pull your thread till there's like a small little loop and then you go through the loop and that will make a knot and you know do this a couple times to make sure that your piece is finished at the end i mean it's got a proper finish so that it won't come undone and then you can just snip it you know, you can leave a little tail as long as it, because it'll just be in the back. Okay, switching back over to my partially completed orange shirt. You can see that I have finished filling in more rows now. And I've just got my one sleeve left. I'm going to try and duplicate what I did on this side, which if you count, this is five in that row, four, then three. And then I ended up putting one there. Um, so I've already got f uh, five beads loaded here and it looks like that'll fit well. Could possibly put a smaller sixth one in there but since I'm trying to make it fairly similar these beads that I'm using are are all slightly different sizes. Some of them are a lot bigger than the others, so it makes it a little difficult to do the exact same numbers if you didn't have the right size beads. So my string is getting a little short here, so I will probably have to rethread to get the last little bit, which is unfortunate just makes it hard to do when the string is too short. So I can kind of demonstrate what I try to do. I mean, I, I did demonstrate already 
how to sort of tie off your your end so I've got the string coming underneath which is kind of nice so instead of cutting this off what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to tie it to the next piece that I start just to give it some extra reinforcement from coming loose okay so I've got my new thread with a knot on the end and what I'm going to do is start it thread it through a couple times and then what I'm going to do with my leftover piece is tie it to the new piece just tie a knot in there like this my dogs in the background again chewing on their distractions that I'm trying to give them to keep them from making a lot of noise but it's not working okay anyway so now I've tied this off really nicely so that's what I've been doing a lot now is just to feel a little bit safer because I don't want all my beading to come out okay so now I'm going to come up right about there I guess actually I think I'm going to move down a teeny bit more okay and I'm going to string on four of course they are all different sized so We'll see what I end up with. Do I have four? One, two, yeah, I have four, but that one there is really small. So, um, yeah, I think I have to take off that small bead. Which, if you watched my pink shirt demo, there is an easy way for doing that. And if you get a pair of pliers, actually, do I have one? I have some right here. Good. Then you don't have to re-thread again. You can actually just take the bead that you don't like and snap it off. Just break it. Maybe. Because I don't know how good these pliers are. Okay, so there's my four. So that should work. Probably it would be better when you break a bead to maybe put a cloth over top of the bead before you break it. And I don't know if you noticed, but I was using white thread. And now I'm using black. And I did explain that a little bit in the beginning about why, about the different threads. And I wasn't really happy with the white thread that I was using. All right, continuing on here after I fixed my thread. Tack these guys down. And in this case, I'm not going to like do the double spine and start at this end. I'm just going to continue right here because I'm not doing a long row. So I'm going to try for three now. Three beads. All right. So yeah, it looks like... Uh, it one one or maybe even two here but I want to try to keep it like the other one so I'm gonna do one maybe I'll pick one of the big ones this time because I have a huge one here <laughs> one that's like two let's see that might actually even be too big let it work I'll make it work Yeah, that'll work. So, let me 
maybe put one in there, but I think this is good. And so what I'll probably do is just uh, take this thread and go through a bunch of beads just to secure it a little bit more. If I can find my way into one of these rows. There we go. And then I'll come down here near the bottom somewhere. Okay. And then I'll go underneath here and do a couple knots. Go there, go through the loop. Do this again. Go through the loop. I think I'll do it one more time. All right, so there we go. So, there you have your orange shirt. Now, it's up to you whether you want to complete it by doing like an actual, put a backing in, a, in this style of pin on. I do have the instructions on doing this in my pink shirt demo backing in pin. Um, I My goal was to make this one a little bit easier and less steps which is why I cut this out and did the beading, the edging right from the beginning. So what my plan was is to get a simpler pin for this one. These ones that just have that little thing. And you can get this really nice strong glue. Sorry for all the sniffing. I have allergy season. It's, uh, you know, pollens and, and that. Okay, so this glue is really strong. So I can just put some glue on there and have the pin. Now, some people obviously do not like having this nice messy back with all the stitches and everything. But, I mean, you're going to be wearing it. So no one's going to see it. But if you do want to go that extra step, you know, for instance, you could get another piece of orange felt and glue it on. Or you can buy like some vinyl stuff here. So I'm just going to glue this on. So just to make sure that this stays, the pin stays on, I'm going to glue it on here. I'll cut this out to, to the size I need it. And then I'll poke, I'll poke a hole through here, right through there. And then that way you can still put your backing on. Uh, okay, but otherwise the other type of pin style is the bar pin, which I do have a demo on how you, you know, you make little cuts there and you glue it down and then you push it through. Um, so that's another style and then you can buy little feather charms and hang um, a feather on there but I think that's about it for for the demo um, so I hope you have fun beading your shirt I enjoy doing beading I find it quite relaxing and it gives me something to do when I want to watch some TV, but I don't feel like sitting still doing nothing. Um, so this makes me feel like I'm also doing something while I'm watching TV. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope this helps some of you. So enjoy. When I made the pink shirt, I just used regular, I can't read now what this is, but it was just regular thread from, you know, a sewing place. Um, and it worked fine. I didn't ever have it break, but I did find that it would get tangled because when you start off with a great big long line of, of thread in the, initially, it does get tangled, so you have to be patient and you know maybe deal with that a little bit so next I have these I had bought some of these bobbins because I thought it would be good for handing out so everybody could have their own little bobbins I think they're called Nymo bar bobs
spelled N-Y-M-O. Um, I didn't really like it too much, even though I was told this is like a beading thread because I don't know if you can see, but it would start to fray. Can you see? It would fray on the edges into like a lot of little little pieces. I don't know if that'll focus on there. And you know, I, I found I could thread fine for the first time, but if I ever had to re-thread, which is usually happens, um, it made it very difficult and it started to get fuzzy. So next one is this one, which is also basically called the same thing, size D Nimo. Uh, for some reason this black one, it didn't seem to do the same fraying. So maybe I just got a bad batch with this one or yeah, I'm not really sure. This one might be slightly different, but this one worked fine. It did break on me once though, which I was surprised about. Another thread I bought looks a lot like the other one, but it is just outdoor thread from by Coates and Clark. I've also bought, you know, just tapestry upholstery thread from Fabricland. This one's from Fabricland too, but you can buy it from Fabricland and the prices are pretty good, especially if you get it on sale. Another one is John Bead. He had, there's a website, uh, it's called Good Thread. And it is bead weaving thread. It's 100% bonded nylon. And then this one is the best um, fire line because it's very strong and it doesn't break and it never frays. So I can thread the needle very easily. But unfortunately, this one is the most expensive to buy. So, you know, you can do it with this nice cheap, cheap thread, but uh, if you don't want to get too frustrated and you can afford to, then Fireline I have found to be the best so far. And you know, you get like over 500 yards on these threads. Whereas the Fireline, even though it's my favorite, you only get like 15 yards of spool for about the same price. So, well this one, this one has 200 yards, but I mean, like I said, I really like it, but you might want to go with instead of skip the fire line and just find some upholstery or tapestry thread or get some John bead good thread. So stay tuned for this project, the wire beaded flower. And I'd like to do something like this. Uh, for another easier activity. This one forms a heart, but I would like to see if I can at all do it with an orange t-shirt in the center, like arrange the beads into an orange t-shirt. So stay tuned for that. I'm also wanting to try making some Delica orange shirt earrings like I did with the uh, red dress. I've given out all my red dress earrings at the moment so I just have this one little one left. I have other projects that I'm planning to do this year. Uh, rattles. I'm gonna do some rattles and uh, I'm gonna learn how to do peyote stitch on feather like on the end of a quill on feathers so I'm looking forward to doing that one as well and sharing it with everyone. I already have a tutorial uploaded on doing the red dress earrings but stay tuned for the rest, if you subscribe to my channel, then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks everyone. Take care.